Okay. Yeah. So, good morning, everyone. Today we have a web seminar on uh, introduction to main mainframe technology, and we have with us Mr. Mr. Vijay Vardhan. He is a technical lead in TCS Canada, and uh, he has been working since 2009 and has 10 plus ex years of experience in IT field. Worked with major US, UK, and Canadian banking and insurance organizations in building the mainframe applications. Previously worked in India and currently leading the team in Canada for the past four years for one of the US banks' foreign exchange applications. He has received his MTech degree in electronics and communication from Manipal University, Manipal, India, in 2009. Welcome, Vijay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Anya. Thank uh, you. Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks uh, Anya and my friend Piyush uh, for inviting me for this webinar session. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. So, good morning, all students. Maybe it's early for you, 9 a.m., <laughs> and that too on Saturday. <laughs> okay. So, here and today to present or give you an overview on this uh, mainframe technology. Right, so I might not be going in detail because uh, this would be a pretty new for you, and maybe it might it might not be part of your curriculum, but definitely it will be helpful for you, like to understand how the mainframe technology and what is it impact and use or significance in banking sectors, right? Uh, banking and business sectors, and maybe in future if you get a chance to work in mainframe, so just at least you will be having a brief idea about what this technology is and how it works, right? Uh, so maybe just, I'll just start with one question. Like, have you ever come across uh, the mainframe? Like, do you, do you know what is mainframe? Or many, maybe in your daily life, also have you witnessed any function or application where you felt that it involves mainframe? So you have any idea on that? If not, also no problem because I, when when I was doing my BTEC, I was not having any idea on mainframes, <laughs> yeah, because it was not part of our curriculum, right? And uh, so I was just I was knowing that there is a mainframe technology that which was existing, which is pretty old. Uh, but when I joined mainframe technologies and uh, when I started working on this mainframe application, right? So then I realized like how strong it is. So. So if not uh, known to everyone, like mainframe is pretty old, maybe it's like 60 to 70 years now. It's pretty old than all the C, C++ or whatever the application that you have, right? So, and there was a situation where in uh, early 90s, the people or the pundits, the tech pundits were stating that, so this would be the end of mainframe era because there were a lot of advanced technologies and advanced programs, advanced machines. Uh, so, but but still, mainframe are the you know major major uh, you can say uh, the contributions in the banking sector. So maybe okay, I'll uh, proceed with the introduction of this mainframe systems, right? So when I ask the question like, have you ever witnessed the mainframe? So or have have you ever thought of like whatever the daily uh, the activities as part of your daily routines? Have you witnessed? But I'm pretty much sure that you might, you guys might have used or all of uh, might have used the ATM transactions, right? To withdraw your money or deposit your money, <clears throat> or to check the balance or what are the mini transactions at all. So, so this is the classic example. So, if you have used ATMs, so then you have used the mainframe technologies because every ATM, what the technology behind every ATM is a mainframe technology. Okay, so that is just an introduction, like how the mainframe that uh, you might not be, you know, uh, able to understand because it is a backend system where it works in. So maybe you might be looking at the, the glossy screen, so where the UI, so it's pretty good and different, different banks have diff different, different, their own UIs. Uh, so, so, but behind whenever you hit the transaction, whenever you select the options, right? So it will go to the mainframe system and fetch all the data and it will then throw it on the screen. So that's the beauty of mainframe. Mm, so I'll just, I'll just proceed with that. So uh, I hope you're able to view my screen, right? Properly, the presentation. Yes, we did. It's, okay. it's been yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, so to start with, right? So mainframe is nothing but just a computing system, right? But when you say just a computing system, but it is a robust computing system rather I would say, okay? So it's mainframe is basically, um, it's a backbone as I was saying, right? So it's a backbone of any, uh, the, the business, right? The core banking system or the insurance system, they're like they will be having the huge data, huge database of every customers or the transactions which are serving, right? So some, let's say if you have uh, account with any ICICI bank, right? So and you want to do a withdrawal, you, you want to do a deposit or you want to inquire any uh, the statements, right? So those are kind of transactions that you will do, right? So, so, so this is nothing but mainframe system handles all those. It's database and the transactions and, um, and especially the security wise, right? So it's like, since, uh, the main important asset of any organization or any system is right. It's a data. It's a database. So that is the main asset. So whenever you're storing a data, so it should be secured, so not only secured, it should be highly secured. So that's where the mainframe systems allows uh, to secure the data, which is highly secured. And it says that, I mean, uh, it's, it's not like it cannot be attacked by viruses but it can be, but it's compared to, to all the other applications or the machines, right? So mainframe are highly secured one. So that's the reason all the business critical applications like banking sectors and uh, any government or insurance sector sectors, even NASA, you right? So they used to have this uh, mainframe system running at the backend application for all their applications. Uh, but recently they have again, um, they're trying to move out of mainframes. So that is altogether a different story, but it has all his, his strong footprints in across all the, you know, main business functions, like organizations, right? So, so that is the main, uh, the significance of mainframe here. And the second one is it's, it's computing feed and speed and capacity. The mainframe, uh, the applications are very fast. Uh, and, and it's the capacity. Capacity meaning how many transactions, like how many transactions it supports. Like maybe in further slides, I will be explaining like what are the facts and how the mainframes uh, and their speeds and etc. But uh, mainframe systems are like a multifunctional. When it's a multifunctional, means multi-users, multifunctional. So, so the same database, same data can be accessed by n or multiple number of users or the systems. Uh, while and while accessing the same database, for example. So if you have an a bank account and you have an ATM card, right? So you will just go to any any random bank. Maybe if you are having an account in your ICICI bank, but you'll just go to any random bank uh, ATMs and then you'll just swipe your card and you, you're ready to do the transactions. So which means one database storing at centralized location, right? And then there are thousands of uh, ATMs, right? So the data is available, highly available for, for all the transaction, for all the ATMs located across the globe, right? So, but the data it is accessing, it's a centralized one. So that is ma mainly resides in the mainframe systems. So which we call as a mainframe database. And like we have DB2, uh, which is a database uh, tool. So you might have heard about DB2, right? So, so that is the main, uh, one of the significance, right? So multi-processing uh, and mainly coming to the IT world, right? So in the IT organization, all the mission critical, right? So when you say IT world, so majorly uh, the, uh, the profit, the profitable sections are banking sec sectors, banking and financial, right? And, and there are other uh, health organizations and government organization too, but IT, when we consider it, it's mainly banking for this mainframes, banking and insurance, right? So when we say banking, and obviously the the data or the the application itself is a critical application. Let's suppose if you are doing any uh, fund transfer to any foreign country or like uh, inside India also, right? So those are mission critical ones. So that has to be done. So let's suppose they have agreed to transfer immediately with IPMS transaction. It has to go, right? So as soon as you do the transaction, it has to hit your destination or whatever your parents or friends, wherever to whomever you want to transfer, right? So have the hit that hit their banking or hit their account and your amount should be immediately get created. So that kind of speed, the mainframe holds it. 
Okay, so this is one of the classic example uh, for the mission critical applications, right? And uh, apart from this, right, so basically I am working in a uh, foreign exchange application. So foreign exchange application means you might have heard it, the foreign exchange, NSE and all this, right? So Sensex and all, right? So in this one, so every every second, so every second the reach fluctuates across the globe, right? So across the globe with respect to US dollars, like INR will vary. Currently it might be around 60, 65 plus, but at the next second, so it will slightly change or drastically change depending on the market fluctuations, right? So this is how the drastical and the, the, you know, the drastical change, abrupt change, so those has to be captured and those has to be appropriately applied, right? So this is also one of the mission critical application that we will say. And any, if you say any foreign exchange applications, the backend system is mainframes only. So not, not the cloud application, not the other applications, but it's the mainframe application that works. Okay. So, so till now you have any questions high level about the mainframe, what is, what is mainframe and if you, if you have understood it or you want some more clarifications. I think we should uh, proceed further. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So now coming to the mainframe servers, right? So what exactly they are and how, what are their characteristics, right? So as I said, the mainframe systems are highly reliable and secured one, right? And uh, their extensive input output facility, right? So when I say extensive input output facility, meaning it's high, the transaction capacity, right? So there are n number of transactions would be hitting it, right? So those are the input and the instant output will be provided, right? By this huge mainframe applications. So the input output facility, so those are extensive one, okay? And uh, so we say backward compat compatibility with the older software because as I said, right? So mainframes are pretty old systems. So it's been all 60 to 70 years of history, right? So you you can imagine how many versions might have come in and how many versions of software hardware upgrade might have come into picture right so at any given point of time so that it should be if, uh, i mean if something wrong with the latest version right so even if you see in your mobile applications right so every time you get notification to update your mobile versions right so similarly so these will be having a number of version upgrades but at the given point of time right if something goes wrong with the latest application so they should have a mechanism to easily fall back to the the very recent version. So that that is a that is a capacity that mainframe applications are having, right? So so the high compatible to go back to the previous previous versions. So so this is one of its characteristics. Okay. Um, and the last one is hard swapping of hardware, right? So as I was saying, so this mainframe systems are basically used in the mission critical, right? Like banking applications, right? Uh, and, and as I said, so their core business runs on this mainframe applications, correct? So which means at any given point of time, so be it you're implement, uh, upgrading your hardware or software or whatever it is, but the end users, right? Like we, the bank, bank holders, the account holders, they should not get impacted. So at any given point of time, I should go and I should be able to do the transaction 24 plus seven, right? So that's where uh, the mainframe builds that capacity. So whenever it has any hardware or software upgrade, so it can swap, I mean, do this uh, hot swapping, right? So there is, there won't be any downtime as such, right? So you might have a question, like when you say there is no downtime, but when you log into your ICICI bank or any other bank site, you can see that our server is under maintenance. So please log in after one hour or two hours. So then you might question us. So, but that is the maintenance perspective with respect to the UIs, the UI screens, which they build, right? So where you have to select the withdrawal or deposit or the, you know, statements, right? So they might be upgrading their UIs or some versions at their end, but not the mainframe. So mainframe will always up and running, right? So that, that is one of the um, best characteristics of mainframe computers. Are you here? You can see, right? So right side, I have just, just for your reference, I have kept uh, the mainframe machine, how it looks like, right? So even now, so we know the significance, like what is the mainframe? that uh, mainframe it has a role in all these organizations right and our daily activities 
but uh, we hardly see or we we never saw these mainframe machines right it's invisible to the public maybe in your institutions also academic uh, academic institutions also they're invisible and maybe for the few of the it professions also it's invisible and we have I mean, uh, at least for me also i haven't seen these machines because these are the machines that will sit in your data centers um, and we will connect through our laptops or I mean, we can we call it as a terminals right in the mainframe technology and we will access the centralized database there and we'll all the, whatever the application that we build so we will store those applications and implement the applications over that i mean at, at the data centers right so that's where so these are not visible to uh, public eyes usually okay okay so you can stop me whenever you have any doubts right so otherwise i'll continue to the next slide <coughs> Okay, so here, I mean, this, I just kept it for your uh, sake of interest, right? So, and just to explain the significance of mainframe in just one slide, right? So, as I said, the primary, right, uh, usage of mainframe applications are at banking sectors, right? And the insurance, the finance, and retail industries, like retail industries, if you consider Walmart, Best Buy, and uh, I mean, they're, they're similar to Indian, uh, more, more and big bazaars, right? So, so all of the foreign retail industries, the big industries, they will use this mainframe applications to have uh, their itineraries, the items stored, and everything like whatever the items they have, the database, the prices, the offers, everything they will maintain in the mainframe systems, and and few of the health healthcare systems also they will maintain their database and the government also like as i said the nasa and few of the major government uh right so they still use um, the mainframe applications right so if i talk about the statistics right so 96 out of world's top 10 top 100 banks they use mainframe okay so it's almost 96 percent in 100 right and again 23 out of top 25 US retailers. So just as I just said, right? So US you, you would retailers means like Walmart, Best Buy, and any uh, see all these retailers that we have. So 23 out of 25 US retailers they use mainframes. And similarly, nine out of 10 largest insurance companies they, they use the mainframes, right? And if you see the volume or the capacity perspective, right? So Per second, so 1.1 million transactions will be triggered. So I just converted for your convenience sake, it's 11 lakhs transaction per second. All right. So that is a high volume customers. High volume means the high money involved transactions. Right. So this is the capacity or the transaction capacity that mainframe holds. And uh, the ATM transaction, right. So if we see the ATM transactions per year, which uses mainframe, right, it's almost $23 billion. It's like 2,300 crores dollars, not INRs. So that is the huge capacity, right? And if you see the credit and debit card transactions, so whenever we have credit or debit card, right? So we just go out and swipe it as a machine. Right? So whenever we do in-store in, in purchase and et cetera, right? So we'll just go and tap it, right? So those kind of transactions, credit and debit card transactions per year. So they are estimated to be 6 trillion. Again, six trillion dollars. That's like six lakh crores. So this is a huge volume that handles, right? And again, if you see the Fortune 500 companies, right? The top 500 companies are listed by Fortune, right? In that, 70% of them uses the mainframe application, right? Uh, and if you see, uh, here I've taken one example. The last one is right. So. This mainframe is not the latest mainframe, but the uh, maybe three, four years old version. So it's supposed uh, almost it runs at 78,000 million instruction per second. So that is the capacity or the speed of this particular mainframe, right? So looking at these statistics, right? So till now we have not realized the importance or what mainframe has the importance, right? But anyways, there are other technologies also. Uh, so they're, uh, again, they are also growing up but at the same time, even mainframe or very old one, niche technology that we call, right? But uh, whenever these challenges comes in with respect to the other applications or other uh, developments, right? So mainframe developers, not, not we, but we work on as a banking application. 
but the actual system developers right so they they work and they will also bring up the new technologies which which will really, again the competent enough to the other technologies maybe i'll cover it in the next slides okay so maybe for the who, who are interested in football right so this is one of the fact that want to i wanted to share here so if you remember the world cup right the fifa world cups happen for all for, for every four years like last one is 2018 happened and before that 2014 so they have introduced a new technology like goal line technology if you remember right so in this particular technology like our, there will be around 20 to 30 cameras on the football ground capturing each movement of the you know ball especially the goal post right so whenever a goal has been made so all the from all the different angles the the cameras will capture the images and they will send let's suppose there are controversies like whenever goals goal is made and few players say that goal is not made and few, few will say that okay goal is done right but for those controversies right so this goal and technology has been implemented right so whenever a goal has been made all these 20 30 cameras will capture the images and it will instantly send it to the application so the backend application again which is a mainframe technology right so they will send all those details to mainframe technology the mainframe system will analyze the data and it will just uh, tell the empire and on his wristwatch whether it is a goal or no goal in the, in the example i have stated here so this will happen in fraction of seconds that is the speed of mainframes right so so this one even i was not knowing this fact uh, like they had used this technology in goal line, uh, goal line technology, right? It's an interesting fact for me at least. Okay. Mm, uh, next, moving to the brief history, right? So, as I said, mainframes are very old. So, kind of they started uh, developing in 1950s. So, it's been almost 20, 70 years now. Okay. So, this, they just started in 1950s and maybe hardly one applications will handle one small transaction like let's suppose if they want to pin, print uh, a payroll right so you know payroll meaning uh, so whenever you will get employed right so you'll get to know the salary slips right so that's how they used to print start they started developing in 1950s so just a minute here if you see the uh, picture right so IBM has invented that and uh, so these are the pretty old machines they used right to generate all these small small reports so that's how it started in 1950 but in 1950 what happens was ibm you might have heard right so ibm company international business business machines so they started they developed one mainframe machine so by standardizing the hardware and software right so this one was most robust right at that point of time and in 1950s and 60s, if you see, these are the only uh, computers, right? the large computers, uh, not for the personal usage, for the business use, obviously. And these are the not only the large, and these are the only computers that were available. And these were not affordable for uh, all the organization, like large banking sectors or bank banks, like US banks and UK banks. They used to purchase it. Otherwise, it was not accessible to any you know personal or small scale organizations. Mm. okay and basically the language right so any application that you might have heard or you might be you know since you are in second and third years of uh, your engineering college so you you worked on the cc plus plus programming right so so this COBOL or the mainframe was right so, so it's well before those uh, c and c plus plus programs were invented so the first programs right so those were like assembler you might have heard right the assembler cobol photon and pl1 so these are the couple of uh, programming languages that are used on mainframe technologies right so even 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 till now these there were pretty old banking sectors right they still use these program to run their critical applications right like assembler and cobol and i mean at least i have not got any chance to work on this assembler photon but yes i mean I work on COBOL. So this is a programming language that is used for to develop any mainframe application. Okay. So now moving to the architecture. So architecture wise, so I'm just giving you the touch points here because at this point of, uh, at this level, right? So it will be, you know, very detailed and it will not be that much uh, user friendly for you. So I'm just 
here I'm just touching on the highlights of the mainframe architecture, right? So as I covered, like there are most stable, secure and compatible of all computing platforms, right? And the operating system that we use, right? It's we call it as ZOS, ZOS operating systems, like you use Android or any iPhones, right? So the um, operating system. So similarly, mainframe has its dedicated uh, operating system. So we call it a ZOS operating system. Right. And uh, similarly, when whenever they started building, right. So as I said, initially, they used to have one small program. Right. But it's like 70 years of history and they slowly implemented and enhanced their, their development capabilities. And now it runs like thousands of transactions, as I just explained in the previous slides. And that's what the target they have achieved now till now, right? <clears throat> so, so they are now become more and more fast processors, right? And the physical memory and the 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 the, the capacity, uh, the memory or the database that they have, right? So the more physical memory and uh, the dynamic capability for upgrading both hardware and software. So I just say that like how the hard swapping will happen. So there will not be kind of zero downtime, right? So all these features they have, you know, uh, year by year they have implemented and now they become very robust, right? Uh, and again, so there are like few automation of the hardware and uh, hardware and software error handling. So let's suppose uh, by any chance if some error happens, right? So they have built a routine, routine such that they will detect it. So what is the error? And they will try to fix it automatically, right? So this is one kind of a, one of the architecture feature that they have. Mm, and uh, as I said, more sophisticated IOs, right? Um, and again, okay, so the, here one more thing is like dividing the resources of a machine into multiple machines. So when I say the data centers, right? So, so these machine will sit in some XYZ data centers, right? So they will not sit in the organization where we work, right? So there will be multiple instances of those particular uh, machines will be created and they will they will work parallelly and individually, right? If let's so suppose if uh, Citibank wants to use the mainframe application, they will be having a dedicated instance, but the data center might be same for all the different banks, but there will be instance will be created and they are independent and they'll work on sp specific tasks and resources and what are the application that we are building, right? So they will be isolated to that particular system. only. And if you have a huge, uh, uh, what you say, uh, the high throughput, meaning, so let's suppose your application is supporting uh, 10,000 10, or 100,000 transaction per second. So if you want to increase that, right? So we need to have more instances of mainframe system so that they can balance the load and accordingly that, that will speed up the processing. So the increase in the capacity. So, and one of those technology is the CISPRESS technology, right? Uh, so forget about these technical terms, but just the idea behind those, right? Like how they'll work, okay? And, and they're highly available. So when I say highly available, as I said, right? So even during the upgrades also, so they will be highly available. And uh, especially for the disaster recovery, right? So this is one of the main, I mean, maybe in whatever the fields that you go in your future, right? So these will be useful, like like disaster recovery, right? So whatever the applications that you handle or you work on right in future. So, so let's suppose if something happens due to some natural calamities or whatever it is, right? So at, at XYZ bank, the ICICI bank at one branch, right? So it affected by fire or something, earthquake or floods, right? So immediately other brands should be able to pick up the task and walk it. So that, that's what called is disaster recovery. So here also, so since mainframe being the critical and uh, you know, the data is very critical, right? So let's suppose if something happens to the data, the, all the banks, the international banks, right? Whoever is using the database or their banking application will simply uh, close this. I mean, if you lo lose the data, nothing. If you just, let's suppose, uh, tomorrow, if you go, you go to your mobile app, ICICA bank, and then you just log in and you want to do the transaction. And once you enter your username and password, so there is blank. So there is no, no data available, right? So because data is lost. So that's where these um, disaster recovery plan is happening. Meaning 
you will be having two instances of your base data centers the data whatever the data that you will store so that will be stored in two copies so one is let's suppose east and east and west so one data center will sit in east and the other one sit sit as west so similarly so that is a disaster recovery for the mainframes also so the data centers that we may have right so we have like midwest and southwest data centers so they will sit quietly opposite to the globe so if in case of any uh, incident happens at one location data center the other location will be able to pick it up and uh, start working on it i mean without any downtime so usually we also test it like how it works right so that is highly available option that mainframe has okay okay as i said right so the mainframes are pretty old technologies and um, most of the people right so i mean now if you see any developer or even if you go if even if you're from electronics background right so electronics and communications in future if you work on any industry or any bank not only bank i mean any other uh, companies right so somewhere or the other you will use a C, C++ or any other programming language right so even if you work on microprocess right so the chip designing vlsa technology vhl whatever the technology that you'll opt right so they'll be having a programming language obviously right so that will be your c c plus plus or python java some other languages right but now if you compare to those languages mainframe was it was pretty old and it was like running behind those like if you see the mobile apps right so you are able to design uh, whatever the banking application even in your games right the online games so all these are uh, the web applications so those are built by cloud some java based or c c++ based based programming not the mainframe one right so this is an area where i mean the it was not coping up with the uh, the upcoming new technologies so that's where so these tech pundits right so they used to say that mainframe it will end now so because the other uh, competing technologies are in market and they're performing very well, right? So where mainframe was still sitting and doing the same old work, right? Like at times we will do, we'll just continue with our old work, but we will never, you know, you know, develop or enhance. But whenever we realize someone is you know, uh, gaining more knowledge and moving forward, so then, then we will start assessing ourselves and then we'll also cope up. So that's the same happened with the mainframe. So what are the systems architectures that work on mainframes, right? So when they realize the challenged by these developing uh, features with the other applications of the programs, right? So that's where they sat and worked on it and they have built new features, like one just to state, I would say it here, uh, to two features. So, okay. So the web serving and the APIs, right? The application program interface. So these are the two, two new features that have been added and these are in, de in the demand and these are these are now it's competing with all the other applications right so which are running on c and c plus plus so i'm just lucky enough to work on the new feature so because in rarely all the banks will use this so now i'm currently working on this apis for mainframes so maybe i'll covering on a high level what api is and how it works right uh, in, in my upcoming slides so okay so I mean, as, as I said, right, so if you have any questions, you can stop me at any point of time. Uh, otherwise, I'm moving to the next slide. Okay. So here I'm just typically, <clears throat> they have taken one example, like what exactly the mainframe process, like how it processes. Like there are majorly two, two kind of processing. One is batch and online. So you might have heard or you might have studied in your curric curriculum, right? Any, uh, the software that you might have learning. So batch pro processing meaning so there is no user active intervention for that, right? So let's suppose in your academics also, right? So let's suppose you have written your exams, whatever the semester that you have, right? And overnight uh, your results has to be, your results or the list has to come out, right? So it's not only for your university or your uh, college, right? So there are a number of universities. So the centralized, uh, academic institution right so they will run a they will submit a job at the night let's suppose it's a bad job so what it does is it will again calculate all i mean it will fetch all the data that have in databases what is the student name how many subjects he has 
what what is his marks percentage everything and then just print out a report in the morning right so this is one of the batch processing that mainframe will do it so if you see here um, in the, here it's a mainframe it's a processing the batch jobs right so let's suppose throughout the day whatever the transaction that you have run so then if they want to consolidate right so how many debit happened how many credit happened how many statements are printed excuse me so so let's suppose uh the overnight so they're running a bad job so right so so these will generate a reports right so let let's whatever the let's suppose payrolls and as a stated one example uh with your scores right uh, that you have right so it will generate the reports and these again will be taken as a backup and these reports will be provided to the institutions like branch office and main office so that they will have a statistics what happened throughout the day the transactions right similarly a report even if you see right if you have an account so monthly you will get a report the transaction summary of whatever you have done throughout the month right so similar to that so you will get a report to the customer right and similarly the atms right so atms also throughout the day what atm what transaction might have happened to that atm so all the report will be captured and the, those will be printed right and similarly while running this mainframe right so there are like application teams and production control team system operators right so they will be monitoring these so whether whatever the jobs are scheduled uh, to capture the reports right so whether they're working properly or not if they have some issues then this particular team will come into picture and they will try to fix the issue right so otherwise this is how the batch processing works where all the reports are getting generated and they will be you know sent to different different um, audiences and similarly at the same time it's not only batch let's suppose during this processing right nightly batch where you're expecting the statement will come so what are the monthly statement that you have uh, run on your bank account right so parallelly you can do the transactions you can you know go ahead and withdraw so those are parallel transaction will again happen but the main database or the disk storage right with that that is common so whether it's printing a report or if you're doing any online transaction so that is same right so this is one of the classic example of the batch processing so how mainframe is involved in this batch processing right <clears throat> so now i'll move on to the online processing right so when i say online processing right so you're uh very well aware of this online processing so like mobile app if you see right so you'll enter your bank account and user id and you will be the the home screen will be thrown and when you when you will request for a bank uh, bank statement so it will give you the statement right so it's like online so and this one is and the classical example is the reservation systems even in the railways or airline reservation right so that is an online so you will select you will just enter the source and destination the time and date and you will be uh, given with the list of the available options right and when you will click it and you will enter the details and then it will go to the back end and back end will process it and it will book the seat for you and it will give you the response back so this is called in our online transactions like online interactive case right so this is a one example is like here the atms right <clears throat> so atm you might have seen so we have so many options to do withdraw uh, deposit and uh, deposit withdraw or statements and every etc etc right so that is an online interactive way so where you hit enter a request and you will get the response right similarly at the same time mainly main at the branch offices right so branch offices if you see right the different different banks so they will be sitting and they will be you know processing some files or some loan transactions or some financial transactions right so all this will be happening in parallel and similarly the central office like wherever the business analysts will sit <clears throat> so they will for any banking or any other um, organizations right so they will analyze the data what's going on so what what loss we are getting or what profits profits that we are getting so these kind of also they will do some automation and they keep on you know improving their applications to get the profits and all so these kind of parallel activities will happen right and if you see the atm transactions and again they, they will connect with the common network the tcp ip the standard networks right so from there again it will access to the mainframe database here if you see again all the requests the atm request 
and the people sitting or the the employees working in the branch office so their transactions or requests they are also going to the mainframe and the analysts right so who work on the reports so those access or whatever the data that they are accessing so that request again is going to the mainframe system so they're like multiple systems are connecting to the one mainframe database of the machines right so here mainframe will serve them so whatever the request they have placed so it will process them and it will send back the response so this is the happening in online so like interactive case so this is one example here right so i'll move on to the next okay <clears throat> so now i've covered like what is a mainframe and how it is useful in our uh, a daily life and exactly how mainframe process it and what is the capacity and this is the technology a new technology that i was you know mentioning right so okay so this is the digital world if you see the now is world is moving to digital but mainframe was a pretty old technology right so now the challenge is how we make it to move to the digital world so this is one of the you know, interesting technology that they have built up. So it's called mainframe APIs, application program interface, right? So as I was saying, so now uh, the mobile apps, right? And so whenever, so now using the mobile app, you can do whatever the transaction you want to. So the behind is the mainframes, right? But earlier there was no such transactions, the online transactions were not there, right? So what happened is like, to get the data from the mainframes, right? And to print on the screen, the UI screen, your mobile app or your web application, right? So somehow something you need to build such that it will go and fetch the data and throw it on the screens. So this is one of the uh, interface that they have IBM mainframes have built up. So it's called API, right? So if you see is one, there is one product called Zeos Connect. So this will be act as an intermediate right for the two different applications one is mainframe and the other one the front end application could be any application java based c base c++ based or whatever right so so now they are also able to integrate with the mainframe and whatever the data they want to fetch they can fetch it via these particular apis right so here if you see the mobile apps and web apps so they can build this and anyways these applications are already having the apis but the API is new for mainframe technologies, right? So now they're building or they, they will place a request, right? So if you see the APIs, it's nothing but just a set of subroutines and programs. So which are handling these transactions, going and fetching the data and providing it to the any front end applications, right? So it's like act as a communication between two applications. Right? And like the data or the format, if you see, so it's a JSON data that is called a JavaScript object notation. So for example, if I stated here, this is a simple example, like name, ABC and age, XX, right? So this is how the data will be transmitted, okay? So, but once the data is captured from mainframe and sent it to the any front-end applications, right? So they can create their own UI, user-friendly UI, so where they can have colorful screens and they will print the data, right? So, so these APIs are now enabling, right? So any front-end web applications or mobile customers, you know, to use the mainframe data. So this is a big achievement that a IBM has done. Uh, and uh, so these APIs are basically called as like service requester and service provider, and you are requesting a service and the mainframe is receiving the service and it will process it and it will provide you the input, right? So this is called a like client server. You might have uh, heard or maybe you might have studied in your classes, right? The client server based communication. So this is one of the technology uh, that has recently built, right? Mm, and coming to the roles, right? So maybe in future, if you get any chance to work in mainframe, so just you might be interested in knowing what kind of jobs and what kind of roles that you have right so like we have different different application uh, roles here so one is like here application development developer like it's you can mean it, it's me i mean if we, if i uh, see in this particular diagram this is where i sit application developer right so what we do is for any business application the build and critical applications depending on the requirement right so we will build the applications and we will deploy the applications on the mainframes and they will do that particular functionality 
and uh, they will execute it and they'll provide the result right so so whatever look for example i'm working in the foreign exchange applications right so any payments that happens right so foreign exchange cross border if you want to transfer money from canada to india right so it's cad to the canadian dollars to inr right so what all the process involved right so those process we need to build here right so that that that's what i work on and similarly the end users right so there are users those will be working on the screens as well mainframe screen so they can they will be able to see what are the amounts and what is the customer that you are sending who is the beneficiary right so those are the end users right so the, the end users will be limited uh, for any any sector any organizations right and then the system programmer these system programmers mainly work on the mainframe machines the system or hardware upgrades right so this is basically their role um, and production production control analyst as i said right so to monitor uh, the production so when we say production it's the live data that we are using when you log into your um, bank account or bank sorry web page so that is a production data i will say that's not a testing that's the production the actual live data that that we can see so so these production control analysts they'll work on that if some any issues happens or on those particular areas so they will address it and they will try to fix it if not they will pass on to this application developers right and similarly there will be the operators mainframe operators where they will work on the statistics and similarly system admin kind of system program and administer kind of equal they have the same roles and responsibilities maybe a bit uh, higher responsibility for the system admin right but as part of this application developer uh, like the, as i was saying this is my role and these are the skills at least minimum skills that are required to work on this mainframes like the programming language so as i said so kobo language that we are using so this is a mostly used programming language for the mainframe application like it is called as common business oriented language it's a pretty old language right and uh, so then cic yes so this is to build any screen so as i said mainframe is not that particular you know user friendly or the beautiful screens right uh, but they have limited features that's where to build those screens so we need cics lang language and uh, the third one is the jcl the job control language so where i was saying right so to process any bad jobs right to build all those bad jobs to generate reports and also we need to have these uh, job control languages and the db2 knowledge and how the data is stored how to fetch the data systematically how to improve the performance while fetching the data it's not like whenever you hit your you know uh, statement uh, this month statement on your bank account right when we log in so it should immediately go ahead and fetch the report it's not it should not take like more than five minutes or ten minutes and just you know loading loading so those are all performance that we need to keep in mind so that's where we need to be thorough on this db2 as well <clears throat> so these are the high level roles that uh, mainframe technology has uh, in current world okay so again moving to just a few screenshot for your reference right so this is how mainframe looks like and i'm not sure you might have seen uh whenever your atm machine goes down right some for due to some reasons and uh these uh, the atm operators will come in and they'll open the machine and they'll try to debug it so then you will see these kind of screens black and green screens i'm not sure how many of you observe but uh, so that's where our back end mainframe runs on that so this is one of the online screen typical example for the mainframe right so this i've taken an example for the flight reservations online reservations this is one of the online processing right so this is a mainframe screen even if you see any um, bank in the bank also if you go on if you want to make a new profile or new but you might not be able to see the screen but the back end the screen they will work on this mainframe so they will enter your details your address phone number etc etc right and they will store in their database so this and this is one of the mainframe online screen right so here you can see the data input has been provided who is a customer and the class first class and what is the payment method date source and destination etc etc and once he hits the submission so it has generated an order the tickets has been printed for the 00225 with the order number so this is how the online screens work right in uh, in currently also in all the 
international not international domestic also if you booking system if you see so these are the screens that we use okay so they are more fast and accurate that's the reason um, and this is just one snapshot i have taken from the google itself right because we don't have any authority to share our confidential data so just simple program is a cobol program right it's like easily understandable like english like language is what they say right similarly here you just this is for batch processing so where you're just defining the file you want to generate and what what it has to have that file it said you should have name which is having 25 byte of size and class which class is the one two three business class first class like the air, air reservation right uh, the flight reservation so all these variables that's that's how we'll code it and it's just a hello world it's a very simple program it just is displaying hello world but otherwise there are very complex programs in the banking and insurance technology right to handle these critical and uh, complex applications right um, okay that's all i have uh, so maybe if we have any questions students it... any questions you may ask sir he will be happy to answer you or you may um, ask what are the job opportunities in yeah. this sector so sir what are the job opportunities in this sector if a student wants to uh, make a career in this technology so from where should he start okay so basically this particular mainframe technology as i said it's a old one uh, even the kind of machines it has right so they are very costly machines so you will get to know like if you want to work on any c c++ right so you can just install it in your laptop and you can start working on it but these mainframe machines are very costly and it's not accessible for the normal public the main the banking sectors but there are tutorials online courses that may be just like interactive screens where you can practice it uh, but otherwise you can uh, so ba basically at uh, the banking industries the it industries right the consultancy like i work for tata consultancy services so you should keep on i mean learning wise so they, there are like it's not that much uh, you know highly available like c c++ if you go to any coaching center so you'll readily available but for mainframe it's very limited but there are like few institutions like we can go it but otherwise it's not required usually you can go to the online courses and in the online also you'll get the materials right so to get the basic knowledge that is sufficient right and uh, and when you have once you have any opportunity keep searching for the jobs if you have any mainframes like for the uh tcs infosys the many many companies have this requirements right the mainframe requirements so once you get the requirement try to apply it so before that just get a knowledge on mainframe what it is how it is and then you can start applying it but how how i uh, ended up or landed in mainframe is like when i have done my uh, masters like when we have in campus interview so that's where i get got selected in tcs and uh, i was not having any knowledge on mainframes but i got to work on this particular field so they simply dumped me but i mean i learned it and it it, it was very good and i'm pretty much happy with this mainframe applications in till i mean they are old but when i joined this mainframe application believe me people were saying why you joined this mainframe you should have quit tcs because mainframe is not the technology that you should go for because it's a very old technology but it's replacing mainframe is at least i don't see in 20 to 30 years down the line so it's it's hard to replace the main main thing is whatever the the core banking systems right so they're not the recent one whatever the recent small banking systems they might go for the new technologies but whatever the banking us banking city bank icic bank or maybe the pretty much old banking system icic is still new uh, but the old banking system they still have all their applications on the mainframe and they cannot simply move it and there are other applications competitors who try to replicate these applications on the other platforms but it's not it's not that much easy like cloud now now this the cloud uh, system is coming in right they are still not able to you know move all the mainframe components so main problem in migrating from mainframe to or any mm. other technology like cloud or uh, yeah yeah so the main problem is uh, the security the main security is security is one and the main is speed and speed. the complex how complex we i mean they are try to implement it but at once you know let's suppose they have built some ui based on java and c++ something 
So they were able to build it, but once they started using it, it was pretty much slow. The okay. performance is very slow. Because mainframe is a dedicated yeah. server given exactly. to that particular application. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But not in cloud or uh, such type no. of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. true. Okay. So that's a robust and that is the, like um, the mainframe is still, so they, they used to call it as dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are now extinct, right? So <laughs> they will say my, my mainframes will be called as dinosaurs, but they're not. No, you know, uh, when the stakes are high, you need to, uh, you need to spend dedicatedly on that thing. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. So for <laughs> banking, for uh, airlines, mm -hmm. for railway, stakes are very high. Yeah, yeah, that's so they true. need that's to invest true. in servers, huge yeah. servers. So. Yeah, it's justified. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Any other question from anyone? You may go ahead and ask. Okay, I think. Okay, no problem. But I'm I'm not sure like how much it is useful for you. But at least I hope it will be like some information about mainframes, right? Because at least at my, I mean, when I was doing my BTEC and MTEC, so I was not having any idea apart from yeah. C, 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 and Java. So that's all I was not having. Maybe in future, if you get a chance, but at least this will give you some hints like, okay, yeah. so these are the mainframe systems and all. So that's mm -hmm. what the takeaway, I believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So no other question from anybody? Okay, I guess they don't want to ask or they are shy. No, so, no problem. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Chandan has raised his hand. Let me unmute him. Chandan? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, my question was regarding that uh, is the mainframe that sir has told that mainframe systems are uh, getting older day by day, then is there any replacement for it? In yeah, market. replacements are there. Yeah, it's a good question. So I was just telling about that one only. So there are other applications like cloud-based applications, right? So there are many other applications which are coming with the new technology, big data, right? So they're still not able to replace it. That's what I was saying. So it was very complex, right? Uh, and sir, the are, they, are these applications as based on cloud? Are these capable of managing these all big? Bunch of data in petabytes, in petabytes, they are exactly. coming, they are storing, exactly. are they eligible exactly. to manage it? Yeah, that's what the one, one, one challenge that they are having, the other applications, right? The capacity or uh, the speed, the huge amount of data processing that mainframe handles, right? So the other applications are lagging. So that is the main reason mainframe are still alive and they're still working. So, so that is one, and then and, and there are like small scale industries and uh, like small banking sectors which used to use mainframes, and due to this cost cutting and budget, so they thought that maybe since they have less data, less processing, less transactions per second, so then in such cases they have slightly migrated, and I mean it's been ten years, right? So in IT industry for me at least, but I have seen few of the banks they're completely slowly migrating from mainframe to other cloud base or the big data, right? But not all can be you know, done overnight. So they will still still be alive. That's a good question. Yeah, Chandra. Okay, anyone else? Mm, then no question, okay. Then I think we should wrap up now. Okay, so, good, good. <laughs> So on behalf of uh, the Department of Electronics and Communication, ILN, uh, I would like to extend my gratitude to Mr. Vijay for coming on this platform and sharing his expertise and knowledge about mainframes. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's really a tough time for all of us when we all are trapped inside our home. Yeah. So at least this medium has given us uh, uh, a bit of freedom in this Hence, that we are able to connect from long off places also. Like you are yeah, in Canada true. and you are uh, <laughs> sharing your experience. That's so, true. That's true. <laughs> I would like to you thank. Realize if, if this COVID my wouldn't have come in, right? So maybe we are not sitting in and discussing our experiences. Right. It's a good thing to is a positive side. Yeah. Right. So I would like to thank all the faculty members of the department, uh, students. Our director, ma'am, uh, Dr. Josna Singh, our senior director, Mr. Ajay Pratap Singh. So thank you, everyone. And thanks, Vijay.
Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, much uh, Vanya, Piyush, and others. And for students, all the best. Okay, with your careers. Yeah, plan it easily, Aram say, and then yeah, all the best. Yeah. Right. Okay. Nice okay. talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Now I'll, I'll time off then. Okay. Right. <laughs> sure. Bye. Bye. Now I'm Bye. ending this meeting. So good day, everyone. <coughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye.